Hey everyone, and welcome to the launch of my new video series on international organizations. This is kind of a sequel to the international relations class that I've taught and I've had up online on my YouTube page now for a couple of years. And I've taught this class, international organizations, a number of times. Uh, I began at uh, TCNJ more than about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I enhanced it and developed it uh, during my time at Rutgers. And the videos that I have now are those that I've recorded here at LIU Brooklyn last year um, during the COVID pandemic. So this was all offered asynchronously, uh, which is why it's mostly, if not entirely, um, PowerPoint presentations with just my voice in the background. So there's no in-class uh, videos. Regardless, right, the class on international organizations is really focused on two broad themes. The first half of the class actually looks at the idea of international organizations like the League of Nations, the United Nations, the European Union, NATO, World Health Organization, Amnesty International. Um, the second half of class looks at the idea of international organization, right? the subject of international institutionalism and how global organizations fit within an increasingly globalizing and interconnected world. So this class offers a little bit of everything. Um, it is a bit more advanced than an introductory class, but it assumes that the enrolled student um, has little knowledge beyond the fact that organizations like the UN and the EU exist. Um, this class really seeks to address um, and, you know, a pressing need for how global organizations work today uh, within an international field that is still dominated by states, but one in which states no longer have the sole monopoly on decision making. I will argue, uh, specifically with organizations like the EU and the UN and even NATO, that international institutions are only as strong as the powers, the capabilities, and the objectives that its member states give them. So while there's no likelihood that any of them will supersede the authorities of states, right? they are as powerful as the states want them to be, it's clear that after a number of years, decades even, international organizations kind of take on lives of their own. They create, um, I think, a greater sense of international community, and they do have um, a significant degree of impact even on their own member states. And this is something that will uh, take on more specifics when I look at my standalone course on the United Nations, of which this is part of the larger family. So I really hope that you enjoy the material. Um, it tends to be a bit more micromanagerial in terms of organizations themselves, but they are rooted within the ideas of IR theory, specifically liberalism and liberal institutionalism. So there will be a lot of material in the first half of these series that you'll find familiar from the IR series, as well as just general knowledge within international relations. So I welcome you once again to these courses, and I hope that you enjoy the material.